All right, welcome. For those of you joining online, you may be able to see me, may not, and be walking around talking. Um, but we have a bunch of hometown agents in here right now. This is the proactive agent class. So we're going to talk about how to be professional in the workplace and also just activities, things to do um, kind of as we get started out. And this is good for new and experienced agents um, all together. So we've already kind of gone around, introduced ourselves. Um, today, just want to talk about what, uh, just kind of raise hands, feel free to blur out uh, professional. Give me some words to describe professional. On time. On time. Committed. Committed. Well dressed. Well dressed. Smiling. Smiling. Prepared. Prepared. They're all good works. So by you guys being here today, you are prepared. You, you know, block time out from your schedule to show up here. Um, you know, you have to show up in real estate. So that's a, a, a giant portion of it. So being available is a huge thing. Um, just first and foremost. Let's shut a couple doors here now that we're uh, started. Great, we're grabbing that one too. Um, so being on time, as we talked about too. So if you're walking in the room now, you're gonna be late. So we're all gonna know you're late. And that's not something you wanna do, especially if you're making an impression with clients. Try to be on time. Justin snuck in at the very last second, so we'll give him a pass. I was so, under contract with somebody. Excuse me. So um, there we go. So <laughs> back there working hard. So. <laughs> all right, guys. Um, real estate, you're your own boss, right? So what are the pros and cons of being your own boss in real estate? Discipline. Discipline. Need to make your own schedule. schedule. Need to make your own schedule. We're gonna hit on that here today too. Live yes. by that schedule. Live by the schedule. What are some cons to being your own boss? Accountability. Make your own schedule, right? <laughs> so accountability, discipline, all those same things are pros and cons. Um, we have to do these things, you know, on our own. We don't have a boss to us to go up to work at eight o'clock every morning. Um, that's something you got to get up and do and hold yourself accountable to it. So accountability is a huge part of being in real estate and really just, you know, diving in and being there for people. People are relying on us to get them in the houses, to show up on time, um, to be there, to be an advocate, to be someone who's knowledgeable in the marketplace, know what they're talking about and protect them in the biggest purchase of their lives, right? Okay. Those are all just things about being professional um, that are, you know, some common, you have, to, you have to get up and do it every day. You can't, you know, take a break, you know, the paychecks start coming. You start slipping, you start drifting a little bit, then you know, get off track. Next, you know, you start veering off. I know there's the uh, analogy when you're in the ocean, if you're off by a degree or two, um, when you're steering and you start from the Atlantic and you uh, go across, um, you know, to the uh, other side, um, you can end up in, you know, Argentina, you can end up in Maine. I mean, it really depends on where you want to, um, where you go. But if you start veering off course, you can get off course very quickly. So I want to talk about today is really diving into the little things. Real estate is full of boring, mundane, you know, repetitive, repetitive stuff. Uh, what are those things I'm talking about? Those are calls, notes, and pop buys. Um, they are boring. They are mundane. But if you don't do them every day, you're not going to you know, have business. You're not going to have repeat business. Um, you know, once you sell a couple of houses, that's great. People kind of say, hey, I've got a few paychecks. I can psych off now. I've made it. That's not quite the case. You have to continue finding those leads nonstop. Uh, it never really ends. It's a perpetual cycle. Calls, notes, pop buys, calls, notes, pop buys. Today, we're going to try to talk about how we can diversify that a little bit and break it up so that way it's not just the same phone calls, the same things, ask for the same stuff, talk to the same people over and over and over again. So, um, Cheapest and easiest way to generate a lead? Who can tell me what it is? Phone call. Phone call. Why is that? You just have to talk to them. Doesn't cost anything. You just got to talk to them. Um, you have to buy them lunch. You know, you're just having a phone call. You're asking a question. So if you're starting off new and you're on a tighter, limited budget, pick up the phone. You can't be afraid to pick up the phone. You can't say, I'm, I'm waiting for my business cards to come in before I send out my letter. Send out the letter. People don't care about the business cards. You have all their contact info. You have their phone number. You have their address. Reach out to them um, and get in front of them one way or another. Just don't wait for something in order to do something else. Uh, we're talking about being a proactive agent today. The key word in that is not only you know, pro for being professional, but it's active. You know, if we're not doing anything, nothing's going to happen. You know, the phone dug me. Get in real estate. The phone didn't just start ringing. People start say, "Hey, I heard you're in real estate now. I want to buy a house." Has anybody had that much success with it? Just Phone starts ringing right at the hook right when they get the license. My friend did hit me up when he got my letter. See, that's but that's you didn't you had an action step, so you sent a letter out. So you got a phone call on. Don't send the letter out, nothing happens. Did you do that? Did you wait for your business cards? 
I did. So. You did. But sorry, I mean, it's, we still did something. And you're just getting licensed, and that's it's okay. But like I said, I want you guys to get in the habit of action. Don't really worry about kind of the back end. You got to be doing something nonstop. Okay, it's a perpetual cycle. All right. Um, let's see what else we have here. What anchors relationship? Trust. Trust. Good one. Communication. Communication. Okay. Knowledge. Knowledge. How about a note? All right. You take the time out of your day to write a note to somebody. That's something that not everyone does. How many pieces of mail do you get this handwritten address to you outside of the holidays? Just from, see, you know, Tim's a past client of mine. So, uh, you know, I still write him notes. So I said, I'm the only person writing him notes. How much of an impact does that have, you know, for me and also for him? A lot. That's the answer to that. Um, all right, notes. When's a good time to write a note? Anytime. Anytime. All right. What after what actions can we write some notes? Phone phone call. Call. You have a great phone call with somebody about hey Johnny, it was wonderful talking to you. I really enjoyed our conversation. If I can be of any help to you, your family or friends here in 2022, I'd love to be a resource. Simple. How many phone calls are you make in a day? What's the standard on our team, Aiden? Um, five. five, three, one is what we say. That's for you guys listening. Um, it's five phone calls, it's three handwritten notes, and then it's try to keep one person face to face every day. If you do that, you will make a killing in the real estate business. Where we drift is we go from five phone calls one day and put some six five phone calls, three notes, and one pop by. I don't have to do anything to that. That's great. You did it one day, but you don't do it every single day, then nothing's going to happen. So it's about building a repeatable business. So if you want to generate leads, over and over and over again, you gotta stay in front of your people, okay? So notes are great for that. Uh, what other times we write a note? After a phone call, what else? Birthday. Birthday. Lunch. Lunch. Holidays. Face-to-face, -face. holidays, okay? There are opportunities to write notes just about after anything you do. All right, you talk to someone face-to-face, -face, in person, birthday, you know, they had a kid, they had a life event, you follow them on Facebook. Um, something happened good to them, they got a new job. And a written note. It's simple and it's easy. It takes all of one to two minutes to write a note. Doesn't have to be a you know, 15 sentence paragraph love letter to them. It's hey, thinking about you. Saw you. Congrats on the new gig. You know, wishing you a prosperous 2022. Okay, something simple, easy. But that's something you're taking the time out of your day to write them a handwritten note. As we just talked about, that just doesn't happen often these days. That's an easy, simple way to make an impact, and you can do that over and over and over again. I have some clients actually live right over here um, in Innsbruck. Uh, when I go into their house and I do pot buys, they have a little bulletin board where they have some pictures and stuff like that all set up. On that bulletin board, there is a rather large now thumbtack, and it's got about 15 of my handwritten notes from the past couple of years for various life events they've happened. And they think it's so cool that I write handwritten notes. They have 15 of them put, buttoned up right there on the right you walk in the door. Um, that's got my business card plastered on it. Fat stack of them hanging off the uh, bulletin board. So, do you think that makes a pretty big impact to somebody? It does is it hard to do? No. Is it boring to do? By all means, yes. Okay. But you know, where you get good is you get good in the boring stuff, and all the fun stuff follows up, up, up after that. All right. Makes sense. Pop buys. When are good times to do pop buys? Anytime. It's always it's always a good answer for real estate. So anytime you do anything, it's a good thing. And but it's Thanksgiving week. It's Thanksgiving week is great. So, yeah, do the pies. I drop off pies. I think I dropped off 87 pies um, in two days this year. And that was it's like seven mm -hmm. or eight days after having a baby. So I got two days out of the house. <laughs> so uh, it was fun. It was a good time. I could go out and see people. I had a reason to talk to them. It was only Thanksgiving. I just had a child. So it was a life event for me. I got to share that with my clients. because I share a life events with me? They share a life events. I, mean, I can't tell me times. I've been the person to find out that someone's getting married, someone's having a kid. I've been the guy holding the phone while someone proposes and when they're at their you know, sold picture in front of the house for their walkthrough. So that's pretty cool. So I get to be involved in a lot of that stuff, and you guys will too. Um, it's, but it's building those relationships just deeper. You know, it's not just the person who's out there to buy and sell a house and you know, get your paycheck and you're, yes, all right, let's go, you know, to Disney World and spend it. You know, we want to repeat that one again and do something good for them. Um, I try to always pop by my clients a month after they close. And try to see them drop off. Um, Tim, do you have a Yeti at your house for me? 
I try to drop off personalized Yetis after all my closings to people. I drove by, I see them, I like to see them inside their house and see what they've done to it in that first month. Um, check it out and, and really just get a feel for that. It's deep in that relationship. I'm there after the sale too, not just before and during. I follow up them, stay in touch with them. They have my client appreciation program. Okay. Uh, we'll talk about client appreciation program. That's really just um, kind of these layers we we're discussing. So calls, notes, Popeyes, um, you know, face-to-face -face coffees, lunches, uh, we have client events. Um, I'm getting ready to do one here. I have seven or eight, nine people who work at Capital One. Um, so I'm going to do a little Capital One happy hour uh, later on this month. I'm inviting all of them because they all work remotely. They don't know each other. It's a giant company. But we're going to get seven or eight people down together um, after a little happy hour. I'll buy the first round or two of beers. Um, I'll spend hopefully not too much crazy money. A couple appetizers, people together. Um, they to me and know each other. Other ones don't know each other at all, but they all walk in. So that's something they all kind of have to walk their backgrounds, life, whatever it is. Um, but seeing that you know you helped out, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people there, and you're the source of that. Now you're asking them to come out and you know hang out and have a beer with you and meet some other people that they work with they don't even know. You know, that's me kind of help, helping bring a little bit of value to them and get them in front of some other people and just something special. It's not me calling to say, hey, you know, who you know wants to buy or sell a house? It's, hey, let's go you know, get together with some people who work at your company who you've never met before. You know, the, is Capital One doing that right now? I don't know. I think they're doing a lot of stuff from home. And from home, you know, we got to be out there in the marketplace. You can't do real estate from home all the time. It's good to be in the office. Uh, being in the office does a number of things. You are around people. You're around agents. Um, the agents who are successful tend to be in the office. Um, I think, you know, all you guys can kind of see that, you know, I know some of you guys are newer um, than other ones, but uh, Suzanne, you can tell me you're kind of a part-time person. You're not in the age, you're not in the office a thousand percent of the time. You have another job, but you still show up, don't you? Yeah. Maybe. We won't tell everybody online. Full-time. It's going to be a full-time, yes. Yeah. Full -time there we go. Do you show up to the office? Yes. How many days a week? Probably it was three early on. It's probably been two lately. Okay. Just juggling it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, in life changes, it's different, you know, time these days with, uh, you know, we won't, we're not going to talk about the old C word, um, but, you know, it's not everyone's out running around um, quite as much. We can still be out there. You know, real estate was deemed an essential business. And obviously real estate picked way up um, when COVID happened because housing became important again. You know, people were out running around, doing all these sorts of things, you know, going traveling trips, going out to dinner four nights a week. Now they got stuck in their houses and they realized, hey, I don't have enough space here. You know, I don't like my you know, wife and kids that much. I need a bigger house. Um, Go spread it out. It wasn't to you, Hannah, or uh, young Teddy, but um, only when you're trying to sleep. So, um, yeah, so those, those are all quick little good things you want to uh, try to do here. Uh, how about mailings and e-reports? Who's part of the Buffini system? here or does the monthly mailings justin hayden ryan okay is that what you use yes yeah, so i we i use the buffini crm that's just what we kind of use it's simple i'm in the one-to-one -one coaching um you know because i myself have a mentor i think it's all good for everyone here too to have someone they try to follow and reach out to and can ask questions bounce ideas off of um, that's a big part of learning and growing in the uh, real estate especially the new people you know reach out and talk to people around you here at Hometown, it's pretty much open door policy. If you have a question, you can walk up to just about anybody in the office and ask them that. Um, there's very experienced agents um, kind of all throughout the company. And you can said, pull just about anybody aside, and they're more than willing to help you out and answer any questions you have um, or help bring you up as well. So that's how everyone here was kind of uh, started. When I started, I was right here in this office. I sat right about where Hayden is, used to be a cubicle. Um, and I sat here by myself. This is about 15 to 18 cubicles right through here. And uh, I got in 2012, and that was not a great time in real estate. Um, still kind of on the downturn from the, uh, the 08 recession. And I was the youngest person in the office. Um, I sat here and I showed up. I made a commitment to being here every day. So I was here every day at nine o'clock. Some days I didn't have anything to do, but I was here. And then from being here, I was able to listen um, to other agents in the company who were around who were still doing deals. At that point, if you're still in the office and st still showing up, you you know were a decent enough agent to still be in the business because a lot of people got out because real estate was very good, simple, and easy at that time where everything was selling, kind of similar to what it is right now where, hey, the market's hot and you can jump in and, and sell some houses. And then what happens when that market crashed, the people who had skills stayed. The people who didn't have skills 
left and got out and found other jobs. So if that's anything to tell you, we got to work on our skills nonstop. All right. And those skills start with calls, notes, hot spots. I'll reiterate that again and again and again, because that's what happens in between all these other little small events and things that we try to do to generate business. All right. All that makes sense, everybody. Okay. All right. Um, do a little analogy here. Uh, talk about being an agent. Don't be a secret agent. You know, being part of being an active agent means we need to go out and do stuff. Um, so James Bond, secret agent, right? But uh, pardon my friends, I'll step over here. James Bond blows a lot of shit up, right? You know, there's a lot of explosions, there's a lot of stuff going on, things are happening. He starts off kind of secret, you know, behind the scenes, and next thing you know, there's an explosion, next thing you know, half the city's on fire. That's why I want you guys to look at real estate too, okay? You got to find a way to, you know, get in there, get in front of people, and start generating business. You know, when James Bond starts shooting off guns, everything, he's making things happen, all right? That's not the action we want to do as far as you know, shooting guns and blowing stuff up. But we want to get in there. We want to make an impact on people. Uh, we want to make an impact on the market. We're going to need to get there and find ways to get in front of everybody and show them our value and our worth to help them buy a house or sell a house. You know, we are the experts. This is a giant sale for just about everybody. I don't care if you're you know, multi, multi-millionaire or you're working at McDonald's. If you want to buy a house, that's a, that's a major purchase regardless of your situation at all. Okay. And we're the people they are trusting to do that. So we want to make sure that we're out there finding people nonstop in order to help us, you know, continue to serve others. All right. Annual reviews. This is something I try to do. I try to reach out to my clients. Um, sometimes you know, in January is always a good time to do that. They don't have to be a past client. They can be anybody in your COI. COI stands for center of influence, which is going to be the people that you're trying to market yourself to and ask business for. Okay. Annual reviews, what are they? Who can, who's got an idea of what an annual review is? Talking about what you did the previous year. Mm -hmm. Okay. Not necessarily, in this case, not necessarily what I did the previous year. You know, interview is, hey, you own a house, right? You own a house, you probably want to know what that house is worth. Keep an eye on the market around you. Have prices gone up $100,000 in the last five years? Does that make me want to either refinance my house? Does it make me want to sell and buy something else? Um, does that mean we want to go out and try to buy a rental property? These are all good things to know. I want to find out what's going on in and around my house all the time. I have a search set up myself for the surrounding four or five neighborhoods. That way, when something pops up, I'm aware of it. I can say, hey, look at this house that just popped up. Um, this one sold for $375. I never thought that that house would be worth above $325. Okay. And that could be pertinent information to somebody in your COI. If they find out the house um, down the street from them is worth $50,000 more than they thought it was then maybe that makes it more possible for them to make a move on their own. Okay, if they can get an extra $50,000 out of their house, instead they may go buy that, you know, instead of now they're selling a three seventy-five, dollars they may go buy a five fifty, dollars you know, or a $600,000 house. But they don't know that house down the street from them is selling for $50,000 more than they think it is. They just don't know that. They don't know to call you. So being in front of them, that's something you can set up. I, I try to do it once a month. Um, for some people, other people will request, hey, I want you to send it to me as soon as the house is the market. I want to know. Um, but that's a good thing to do. Hey, what have the sales been in my area, my location for the last you know, six months or a year? What's the average price point for my neighborhood in, in 2021? You know, where do you see it happening in 2022? Suzanne? What um, format or what kind of interaction? How do you kind of, what's an example? So I set up like a monthly search. Okay. So when I'll, I'll do that. So um, and sometimes I'll do it. So it's not just a monthly one, but it's just a set up a client on a search for, you know, if they want to be in a specific neighborhood. You want to set it to them for ASAP. Um, so I have um, you live in Ash Creek still. So I was doing. I have another agent on the team who lives in Ash Creek as well. He's talking about doing a flyer, and he wants to show people, you know, what the prices have done in the past five years. So, um, so we have a little flyer for that. Um, but you can also go through. He's going to have on there too the last the houses that sold in the last three months, what the average price point's going to be, what those average you know beds, baths, square footage, have them all listed out that way people can see this is what's going on in my neighborhood. Can you guys see how that's valuable information to it everybody? Just goes to the whole name, but not just. Well, no, I, I set up for my specific client. So if you are living in Ash, Creek, I get one in Ash Creek. Yeah. Well, this this and would be. This yeah. Well, this would be to. Uh, he, he this guy's talking about doing a, like a flyer mail, walking around doing it, which is another thing you can always do. Um, and so we're not limited to just doing this, but for, as far as the annual reviews would go, it's you know, hey, let me run you a CMA on your house. Or let me set you up on a search that way you know what's happening in and around your neighborhood. That'd be beneficial to you. Yeah, I'd love to know what's going on or what houses are selling for and around Rob Little. 
Um, that just helps them out and they get to know their market a little bit better. They're in tune with you. You're the one delivering the information to them, all right? So that's value and that's, you're the expert. You know, they get all the real estate information from, you know, in this case, from Kevin. Kevin sends me anytime a new house hits the market that's in my neighborhood, I know about it right away. They may, may not be interested in buying or selling or whatever, but now they know this one sold down here. I may, I may have a friend that wants to move into the neighborhood, or I have a friend looking for a rancher. Um, or anything like that. That just, it's another reason to send something out to somebody. That's just another one of the layers. You know, so you have your calls, you know that they're pop by. Now they get an email from you with real live information about what houses are selling for right around them. It's valuable, right? So that's something you can always do. Um, you know, so I sit just clients up regularly on the search just for around their house, three or four neighborhoods around it. That's so that way they're getting all that info. Um, so it's all just good stuff to do. Annual reviews would be kind of also just more of, hey, let me run you a, a CMA on your house. CMA meaning comparative market analysis, which is, you know, kind of taking all those houses around and kind of figuring out what theirs is going to be worth based off beds, bathrooms, square footage, location, neighborhood, um, style, condition, all those fun things that go into that. Um, give them a ballpark idea of what their house could be worth. Some people haven't, you know, they've been in their house for 15 years. You know, markets changed a lot. I mean, you have a 19% increase in sales price year over year over the last kind of two years, you know. People's, you know, houses increased a bunch. You know, that may give them the ability to go so that they can refinance, um, pull some money out, you know, improve their house. They could pull money out of the equity from their home and build a, you know, a huge patio out back or a screened-in porch um, or update anything else in their house. They want to renovate their kitchen. That gives them the opportunity to do that, and they know that because of you, right? Um, let's see here. <clears throat> so running comps on that, and that's always just a good thing, such as renew in the... Um, Newer in the business agents, call up your COI and you say, Hey, I'd love to set you up on that search. Let me get you up on the search for in around your house. That way you just know what's going on in around the neighborhood. And you can also run them an actual CMA on their own home. And that gives you a great reason to practice. Okay. If you're starting off a new, it's sometimes easier to talk to your friends and family and kind of fumble around um, with them and just kind of learn they're helping you out. Um, you say, hey, Look, I'm just trying to practice. People are very receptive to sitting down and let you come and sit down in front of them. And show them, you know, kind of what's been sold around them and what you think you get their house sold for. Okay. Those are all good things to do there. And so just running comps, the more and more you're on MLS, the better off you're going to be. All right. Um, let's see here. Also, when we're going through those people who are in your COI, we've got to make sure we're qualifying them. All right. We want to make sure that the people who are actually worthy of your time, effort, energy, money. Um, if you've been marketing to somebody whose brother is in real estate, are they going to use you? Probably not. Are they going to refer you? Probably not. Should I be buying them, inviting them to happy hours and spending my money on someone who's not going to refer me business? Probably not. So just be smart with that. Um, who can tell me the mayor campaign? Jacob. You want it? I want it. Give it to me. All right. Um... Kevin, I think how are you? This is I'm doing what I am. Um, who knows? Me? Words, yeah. If you were buying and selling a house or knew somebody who was, you'd probably be the realtor you refer them to. Yeah. All right. That's the mayor campaign right there. We want to make sure the people that we're talking to are in our back pocket, in our corner. They're supporting us. They don't have the aunt that's in there that talks to them once a year. Um, and then goes and sells their house for you know half a percent. Okay, we want to be the people who are out there. We want to make sure that these are our people that we're spending our time. You know, I don't like spending you know time with people who don't appreciate and value my time. All right, they should be the same way with you. But some people will kind of pull you on, like oh yeah, yeah sure, yeah yeah you're my guy. All right, dive into that and make sure that they're actually you know. Hey, when do you plan on moving? You know, do you have any friends, family? And just kind of see what they say too. We want to make sure that people are, are really supportive of what we're doing. And that's by working relationally. Okay. It's not always just asking them, hey, who wants to buy or sell a house? It's how are you doing? What's new in your life? You know, it's you got to talk to them. You got to be able to listen. Um, jot that down. Hey, things are going great. We just we got a trip planned to Georgia, you know, next month for grandma's birthday. You can take a note of that down, follow up in a month, and say you're calling these people because they're also friends with them. All right. How was your trip down to Georgia last month? You have a good time? You know, I know your you know, sister just had a kid. I saw that on Facebook. You know, check in and see how things are going. Um, and then inevitably they end up asking us, hey, how's work going for you? 
real estate's great. It's a great time to buy. Interest rates are incredibly low. Um, you know, right now we're people who are trying to buy some investment properties. You know, anybody that's looking to buy an investment property this year? So yeah, they just kind of naturally will just flow into it. So it's just finding that reason, talking with them, asking about them, and being genuine about it too. You can't just kind of you know BS your way through it. You actually have to care. Um, caring is a big part of that. But I said these people who you care about, you're working with, you're trying to help out, then you know they're gonna you're going to you know, respect and care what they have to say, and listen to them, and you know, see what you can, what value you, you, you can provide. All right. Sometimes, hey, I'm trying to you know get a fence put up. I have a great fence guy. Let me connect you with. Him. Okay. Now you're the source of that. Hopefully your fence guy's a you know good guy, does a good job, and they're very happy with them. And they say, I need an HVAC guy, you know, for next year. And then it's hey, you know, someone else is talking about selling their house. You know, I, I gave them your number. Oh, that's great. Do you mind if I get their contact info so I can reach out to them? All right. When, when someone gives your number out, they rarely call you. All right. We want to teach our clients to say, if you have someone who is interested in buying or selling, you know of reach out to me, give me their name and number, I'll reach out to them and take great care of them. Okay, that's you. I, I, it frustrates me to no end when I say, oh, I, you know, I'll go see a client for a pop I Well, I gave your name and number out to, to Johnny and Sarah. I've never heard of Johnny and Sarah. I don't know who Johnny and Sarah are, because they never called me, all right? That's why we want to make sure we educate our clients to refer us by giving us that phone call. Here's their contact info. I've already told them you can be reaching out to them and you follow up pretty much immediately. And that's a shoe in. Okay. That's when you have this, uh, you know, a listing that maybe, you know, that they may want to use someone who's in the neighborhood. Well, they, you know, if you reach out to them, you're a warm referral. They're much more likely to use you than they are the random person who's been in the neighborhood. Okay. Cause you're trusted. You know, you've been, your name's been passed along to somebody. You followed up, you've given them a call. You, you've been the one to initiate the, the action. All right, we're the ones reaching out to them. So being proactive with that uh, always helps as well. Um, qualifying questions to yes or no answer, similar to the mayor campaign and you know, the great part about it is it's a yes or no question. Am I the realtor you, you would refer out to? Yes or no, it's not a maybe. It's, you know, do you have someone else you'd refer them to? No, right, and I'd love to be that person. Yeah, it's a yes or no question. So we wanna close them out and make sure that we're the people that they're spending their time uh, with as well. Um, let's see here. I know we kind of talked about already just by showing up today. That's being you know professional. That's being active. All right. Showing up to the office. Like I said, I touched on a little bit. I showed up from eight o'clock to five o'clock. I sat here, like said, right where Hayden is. Some days I didn't do anything. I was just here. I was just listening. I didn't know really what I was doing. Um, like I said, there was no one really around me. There, everyone was kind of in their offices around here. Um, you know, doors shut. But I can still pick up on conversations. Um, still hear things. I was a guy, I'd sit out at the cubicles every now and then up, up front. Um, I picked up a couple of my first leads from that. It was just leads that other people in the office didn't want. Hey, I got this call, house is 150 grand, not worth my time. You can take it if you want. That's how I got started. Do you know how I did that? So I sat here every single day. I was reliable. I showed up. They trusted the fact that I was going to be there and take care of their clients because I show up to work every single day when I have their boss and don't have anything going on for myself. You know, I was still there, showed up, showed up, showed up, showed up. You know, they, you know there's that phrase, you know, showing up, you know, path battle in real estate's even more. So if you're around, you're here every day, you pick up little things, different agents in the office. You know, Greg Spicer is in here, you know, um, you know, Cole's back here. We have, you know, Larry Sanders and his team. Andrew Parham was here, in here. Uh, Ken Headley was great. Um, you know, he's no longer with us, but he was a guy who really lived a good life. He was very happy. He, he cared about every single one of his clients. He was involved in things they did. He was involved in outreach, involved in the church. Um, and those are the people, just by being himself, people gravitated towards him because he cared about others. And I think that's a very good lesson to have for all of you as well. All right. Um, shadowing agents. Um, there's a bunch of agents in around here. They'd be more than happy to let you tag along to their showing, to their appointment, to their home inspection, to their listing appointment. Um, take advantage of that. Um, you know, try to build some relationships with the people in our offices. Um, I said there's a wealth of not only this knowledge, but experience here as well. Um, you know, sometimes you need to bring or see what they do in real life, or if you have a listing that may be competitive coming up, you know, you're going on a your own, your first time ever going on one, grab someone from the office that's experienced, bring them with you. You have a much better shot at getting to split the commission with them, but I'd rather split something than split nothing. Okay. So if you go out there and you're 
you know, never, never done it before, you may want to have someone with a little bit of experience to help you along the way. Okay. Don't be afraid to reach out to that. I said, experience helps. You know, if you hear those table conversations when you're sitting across the dining room table, that is where all the money is made. You know, how do you, yeah, and Dean's great at it. So uh, I've seen Dean do a number of times as the trainings in here too. Um, sitting down with them face-to-face, -face, personality matching, um, seeing how it reacts to different people, different ways. You know, are people analytical? Are they you know, fruit food? That, that all they care about is the paint colors and how everything looks. Or are they, you know, all they care about is numbers. Are they big time dreamers? Or are they pessimistic people? You know, you got to be able to kind of play off of them and you know, find their personalities and what really works. Um, so just make sure you attend all trainings too. Uh, I said, by showing up here today, you guys are getting better than anybody who's not here. Okay. Um, trainings, you learn a little bit from everybody. Uh, I think you always take away something, no matter you know, who it is teaching the class. Some are better than others. Some are more boring than others. Um, some are give you more ideas. Other ones kind of give you more you know, technical aspects of it. But there's always something to be learned um, across the board. All right, um, previewing properties. Someone tell me about previewing. Who's previewing property before for clients or just just in general? All right, Suzanne, Craig, Justin, tell me about previewing properties. What do you do? Why are you doing it? Especially if you have somebody who is extremely picky, mm -hmm. go in and just make sure it's not going to be wasted their time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I know uh, we have some clients that have like out of town buyers, got some people who want to come down from, uh, you know, DC for the day and want to do it. You know, you could drive by that house and you know, reach out to the agency. Hey, I just want to check this out, see if it's a good fit for my client before they come down here and check it out. Um, before, when there was much more inventory, it was much easier to do. Um, when I first started, I would go on to MLS. There, you can add a field to it for lockbox, you know, with showing instructions. So it'd be lockbox, go direct. That way you don't have to even reach out to the other agent. The houses are vacant. You can just go there whenever without an appointment needed. And I would just go there. I'd find all the ones that were lockbox, go direct from area 34. So Glen Allen. Now I'd go through all those houses and kind of compare them. Hey, this one seems to be really overpriced or this one looks much better than it did in the pictures. Maybe I need to call my investor guy who's looking for something similar to this and say, hey, this may be worth checking out. It's also going in and out of houses, nonstop. What are we selling? We're selling houses, right? All day, every day, we should know a little something about houses. You, know, you want to go in, you know, people, you know, if you're selling cars, you've never driven a car before, um, you know, how well are you going to be at selling those? You know, just because you haven't bought a house yet or you don't own a house, doesn't mean you can't sell houses, but you got to know what you're talking about. So you got to go in and out of them nonstop. If you have a break in your day, you have three hours to kill, jump on MLS, jump on the hot sheets, um, see what's out there, just hit the market, familiarize yourself with what price points are coming in, what neighborhoods are hot right now, how fast are things selling. Um, you know, you may think you're just playing around on the computer, but you're learning something. So, you know, how long, and, you know, you do searches for different areas, different neighborhoods. You know, what's the average price point for Ash Creek? You know, what are houses like in Brookshire? You know, how many days on market um, can we expect to have? You got an appointment coming up, you know, next week for a, for a listing? Drive through that neighborhood. What are the recently sold you know, houses in there? Drive by. How does the one that I'm getting ready to potentially list or try to compete for that listing, how does that stack up to properties two, three, and four that I'm going to have in my CMA? So get out there, get in front of the houses, get the other opportunity, you know, if there are other houses that are active on the market, there'll be competition for us that are priced at, you know, 400 and we're thinking we're going to be around 400. Go through those houses and see how we stack up. Right? Those are all going to help you say, hey, I've actually been in house, you know, two, three, and four. And, you know, based on what I'm seeing here, I think we need to price ours at, you know, 379 instead of 400 because this one's got a better screen in ports, got better finishes, this one's got vinyl siding, we have hardboard, all those little things you can figure out just by driving around, checking out. And the reason I know those stuff is because I drive around, I went through houses, I followed people on inspection reports, um, I read inspection reports, um, thought if I tagged along during inspections, I listened to the inspector, I followed the inspector around, um, I'd hear how the, you know, the, the client and the agent interact. I'd hear the recaps of what scares people, you know, you know mold, mold scare, molds in every house. It's in every prospect. Don't freak out about it. Now I'm able to educate my clients. Hey, I've been on 10 inspections in the past two weeks. Nine of them have had mold in the crawl space. This is very common for the Richmond, Virginia area. We're at a you know, humidity level where, you know, we get the water tables right around where we are. We're hot, cold. It was seven degrees on Saturday and we have a foot of snow here on Tuesday. So those are all little tiny things that we can use to our advantage to help make us um, look more competent. Um, one of the lines we like to use on our team is competence closes. You know, if you know what you're talking about, 
people are much more apt to trust you and they're much more likely to you know, sign off on that uh, deal and listen to your recommendations um, on that. So the competence is a huge part of it. Going in and out of houses um, is a part of that. If you have a buddy in the office, um, so you know, uh, Jacob and Craig run over there in the Ashland office, if they you know, have nothing to do for three hours, tag team it. One of you guys be the agent, one of you guys be the buyer and go through three houses. You know, it shouldn't take forever long, you know, look at things. You know, I look at a house when I go by it, try it like, an, like an inspector. What's wrong with this house? It's brick. All right. Do I see any foundation cracks as I'm walking around the exterior of the house? All right. How old is the roof just based off what I'm looking at? Is it three tab shingle or the uh, uh, dimensional shingle? Or is it slate? You know, these are all things that kind of play factors into the house. It's a brand new roof, that's, you know, a seven to $10,000 or seven to $15,000 upgrade to a house. You know, if that's already taken care of, that's one less thing that my buyer has to worry about for the next 20 years. Okay. So just kind of knowing those sort of things, which one is an electric hot water heater versus a gas hot water heater? You know, does that have a flue pipe coming out the top of it, meaning it's gas, or it's sitting on the concrete floor without a pan that's going to pop up the inspection report? There's concrete force and it holds, retains water and it can rust out the bottom of your uh, hot water heater. So these are all little tiny things you pick up on and learn um, throughout the whole inspection process. Um, and just that's it, getting out of houses, looking at it, listen to inspectors, listen to people. What issues pop up again and again and again? So it hit on the mold, uh, the foundation cracks, HVAC being 25 years old. Is that okay? And, you know, and warranty worth anything? Is it good or is it bad? You know, what are the stories? What are your experience with them? If you don't have any experience with them, ask somebody, what's your experience with home warranties? Are they a good thing or a bad thing? Are they, you know, are they got a beneficial force or are they a giant pain? You know, and you can advise your clients that way too. So I said, reach out to people in your office, get in and out of houses as much as you possibly can. All right. Um, offer to fill in for inspections. I know um, I've been to enough inspections where I, I you know, it's sometimes you're sitting around for three hours. I could be much more beneficial making phone calls or in the office getting things done. If you're a new agent and um, kind of tag along, maybe tag along a couple of the showings um, with, with that client, offer to fill in on the home inspection. I'm sure the agent, um, the experienced agent, would be more than happy to uh, skip it. Um, inspections aren't a whole lot of fun. They're, so it's a great knowledge booster um, by being in and out of there. But if I could avoid an inspection, I would, um, just because it's a couple hours I could be doing just about anything else. Um, sometimes it's good if you get the clients, just the clients aren't going to be there. Um, so you have out of town people offer to you know, sit in there on that inspection and you know follow the inspector around. What are you looking at? You know, what's the issue here? What's a typical cost for something like this? How do you remedy it? What type of person needs to go out there and take care of this? Is this a handyman sort of thing? I got to get a, you know, a licensed contractor. Is this you know, main girder beam that's split? Is that a big deal? Is that a little deal? Do I need, you know, is the house going to fall in tomorrow? Um, do I need to be running for the hills or is this one of the mill? And these are all things you kind of find out. Now we can talk knowledgeably to your clients, but offer to fill in um, for people who are just tagging along to inspection. They want to kind of stuff. Um, <clears throat> who here has preferred lender? Dan, Brian, Aiden, Jacob. Greg, got one? You wonder? Got one right back here for you. So um, make sure you know your lender. Have a person in your back pocket that, you know, this financing is a huge aspect of real estate. Most people need to get a loan for a house. Um, you know, I don't spend any time with any clients until they've been pre qualified. That means they've talked to someone like James back here. Um, they've gotten pre qualified. They know what their price point is. They know what they can afford. We know what loan type they're going to do. That could affect what type of house we're going to look at. All right. Um, you know, if the house has a bunch of issues, it's got rotted wood peeling paint, and they're FHA buyers. You know, kind of a waste of time for even us putting a, you know, writing an offer on uh, on the house because it's going to get turned down. Um, it may get accepted, but you're setting yourself up for failure when the appraisal comes back and says, hey, the whole house, every window's got rotted wood. You know, there's peeling paint all over the place. There's cracked windows. The seller's not going to take care of that sort of stuff. And we just wasted, you know, not only time, we wasted money. Um, the buyer's going to pay for that inspection. The inspection's done before the appraisal. So he just, you know, he or she just spent, you know, 300 to $500 um, on a home inspection. It was paid for the appraisal that came back and said, hey, this house isn't very good and we're not going to lend you the money for it. So now they're out a thousand bucks. And how's that love meter start going um, when they spend a thousand bucks and we're back to square one? You know, you're, you're full here and you start dipping right back down because that's something you could have prevented very early on. So no differences of what loans um, are good for certain types of houses. If you're looking at a foreclosure, 
you know, and if they're a VA buyer, meaning they're a, a veteran and they're getting 100% financing in most cases, you know, there's the stipulations on a VA loan are much more strict than a conventional loan. A conventional loan doesn't really care if you have a broken window or a little bit of rotted wood because you're putting down, you know, enough money for it to make sense and you're less risk to the bank. Um, but get to know your lender, have an idea of what price points um, kind of people are in. You know, I, I know I had clients just get pre-qualified. Uh, I had a guy that did estimates at, you know, 150 up to 250 and those, um, he was putting out five percent, and his prices range from nine hundred bucks to about fifteen hundred bucks. He's much more comfortable in that twelve hundred dollar range. That kind of put him in the low low two hundreds. Um, just kind of knowing that off the bat, hey, what do you want your monthly payment to be? You know, if you want to stick around fifteen hundred bucks, all right, that's probably right around a two fifty. Let me get you talking with James here and get you pre qualified to make sure everything looks good. Okay, then you start taking those people out to look at houses. Okay, so make sure you know the lender, have an idea of what loans, uh, what the Kind of the pros and cons of each loan are um, are always good to know too. Any questions on that or anything? Feel free to stop. I don't want to ramble the entire time, so feel free to uh, interact. Um, let's see here. Uh, credit scores. That's something that I said James can kind of enlighten you guys on. But you know what the minimum kind of credit scores is. When you get that phone call from somebody and they say, "Hey, I'm, I'm interested in this house I saw on Zillow." Um, but my credit score, you know, it's, you don't have to get into all their finances, but if they have a 400 credit score, they can't really do anything. Um, maybe I'll get with James. He can talk with some sort of, you know, credit you know, refurbishing or trying to help them along with that. Um, that's how you can also fill up your pipeline with potential leads. Say, hey, there's someone who's working on their credit score. They don't have any. They've been financially responsible. He's a credit card. They didn't make everything but a debit card and haven't gone into any debt. Well, fixed credit credits, it's 5,700, then uh, that can be someone who buys a house in three or six months. And you are the person who connected them with the lender, who helped them get their credit right. Now they're able to buy a house. That all comes back to who? The realtor, right? To be the source of the source for all of them. All right. Um, attend training. We already talked on that a little bit. Um, make sure you're in front of agents. Take advantage of what Hometown does. A lot of other companies do not do this sort of stuff. Uh, we, we try to be very hands-on with everybody here to make sure we're putting you in a position to succeed. Um, you know, although we're all somewhat competing against each other, very rarely do we come across a person where it's, it's two hometown agents competing against each other for the same house. Um, there's a, you know, however many houses or how many houses are sold in Richmond every year, you know. We need to go find that one out. So market stats, note that you can look up. Um, they usually send those out uh, during the uh, the monthly meetings, so we'll have market stats, what's the average days on market, what's the supply inventory, um, we'll have a lot of things like that, what's the average price points for different zip codes, there's stats on stats on stats on stats, get familiar with them, stats can help you a lot, it does make you sound more knowledgeable and competent, uh, if you know the average price point for, you know, in uh, 2021, I think it was 300 and like 70, 40, I don't know, some, somewhere in there. But don't fudge all the stats, but try to have some in your back pocket. You can, you can do I, don't know, I know one right now that I've been using is prices increase 19.1% here year over year. We went from you know, where we were in 2020 to where we are in 2021. Now 2022, they're expecting to raise about six to 7%. percent not going to be quite as crazy. Um, those are all just things you're going to let people know. And the reason it may not go as crazy is because interest rates are supposed to jump up. Yeah, if they're supposed to raise interest rates there, which is going to affect our purchasing power. We can't, if their interest rates are higher, then we can afford less. Okay, so how's that going to affect the buyers? You know, they may kind of tone it back a little bit, but maybe those houses that were selling, you know, fifty thousand dollars over list price, people are kind of like, oh, I don't know if that house that you know should be listed at two fifty. I don't know if I'm willing to pay three hundred for it. Maybe I think it's worth more than two fifty now because my monthly payment is now higher up than it you know, was six months ago. So that's also going to affect or some people to either reconsider what they're doing um, or sellers, you want to get them in, on the market right now, right? Buy interest rates are low. People can buy more. They have multiple payments more manageable. They're much more willing to expand their price point if they need to. That, you know, they're buying a $500,000 house right now. Their payment, you know, maybe 2,500 bucks. If they're buying it in six months, where that, um, you know, same scenario, their payment may be 3,000 bucks for the same house, the same price point. That's all interest rate driven. So people are going to be more apt to get out there and do things now. But have some stats at your disposal that you can use and throw out there and be knowledgeable about what you're talking about, and how it works. Okay. Like I said a lot of that comes down from talking with lenders and just you know kind of having a pulse of the market, what's going on as a whole. 
um, still while we're doing calls with those top buys off to your under every now and then. Um, <clears throat> open houses are a great way to kind of generate business. Um, Suzanne, you do a ton of open houses, don't you? Yep. What's your favorite time to open house? <laughs> Friday, four to six, <clears throat> or three to five, depending on the time. Why does that work well for you? You know, it, it all started because everybody was doing Saturdays, mm -hmm. and you get people coming in from work, and if you do the proper signage, yep. people, oh, let me go check that out. Exactly. So, so in the winter, it's four to uh, three to five, which is great for daylight. Yep. So yes, yeah, so winter's not my favorite time to do it, but I, we've kind of our team stolen that a little bit from you. I know my sister Mara loves she loves doing the Friday open houses, so she can you know get an open house in, be some selective buyers, and then go hit the bars. Um, and she's already done open house for the weekends. So that's not um, that's yeah, it's not not quite your process, but you know everybody does a little bit different. So Saturday twelve yeah. to two also. Yeah, yeah, twelve to two is always a good one. Um, yeah, and you can also do you know twelve to four. I mean, you can be there for four hours, and it's a little more of a commitment. But you know if you, if you have nothing else to do. Why not, right? Throw a ton of balloons out there and try to drive some people to get to the house. Um, you know, try to find some time and be smart board, go around the day before and knock on, you I'm not sure if you're allowed to knock on doors anymore, but, um, you know, try to put flyers in mailboxes or you know, just people walking the street, hey, I'm holding an open house down here. Do you have any friends or family that are thinking about moving into the neighborhood? Have those conversations, pass out a business card. These aren't all things that, you know, you're going to see direct results from, but the more activities you do, the more results you're going to have. Um, sometimes you can't always correlate, but I know when, you know, I go out and I, you know, I did, you know, the whatever 80 some pot buys um, with the pies, you know, I didn't get, you know, stuff directly from that, but I had a lady that said, no, I, I don't want a pie because I'm healthy. Um, she sent me a referral. I didn't drop a pie to her, but I called her, I reached out to her. Um, and that's how I'm getting ready to list the house. Um, that's it going live right now. Um, so you'll have stuff like that. The more stuff you do, the, the greater return comes back to you. Um, open houses are a great training ground. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, um, open houses are great um, for a number of reasons. If you if you don't know your dialogues, if you don't know what questions to ask, if you don't know what to expect, do an open house. You'll get absurd questions, um, but it prepares you for what buyers are interested in. What are they talking about? What are their concerns? Um, so that it's great. And if you mess up, if you don't know the answer, if you fumble around with your words or come off sound like an idiot, it doesn't really matter because you're probably never going to see anything. All right. <laughs> so if you need, it's, it's a great place. If you're hesitant to reach out to your friends and family because I don't want to say the wrong thing, I'm afraid I'm going to mess up, do three open houses a weekend. You'll have a lot more conversations. You'll get a lot of knowledge out of that. Um, and you'll, you'll learn. You'll learn the conversations you need to have. What, like I said, what do buyers, what's important to them? Now you can start to you know, make sure you have information ready to go on the next one. And then that next open house, you sound much more knowledgeable. You know what you're talking about. You're like, okay, this guy's got his stuff together. You know, I'm interested in the house down the street too. You know, you want to show me that one? Um, and, you know, if you're a good agent, you've already seen the house down the street because you know that's one that other people are interested in because they're walking down the, you know, growing two blocks away. Well, this house is a little bit different because of this or that, or that house is actually maybe a little bit nicer um, because it's got the screen porch and the you know conditioned crawl space and the roof was just replaced as well. You know, this house, it's got you know, single pane, you know, windows. You can feel the air blowing through here on this cold day. Um, you know, that may be why that house is worth more than this one. It's a lot of the advantages of it, but know what those ones are. Be an expert with the marketplace, what's going on right around you, okay? If you don't want to be the guy like, oh, uh, client or the person walks in the house. Yeah, what's wrong with this house down the street here? What house are you talking about? What house is down the street? I have no idea what's going on two blocks away. Do some research, do some prep. Um, preparation is key to just about everything. Um, and if we talk about preparation, also we'll talk about the schedule. Um, who has a daily written schedule? One, two, three, four, okay. You guys gotta get on all right prepare tomorrow today if you don't prepare tomorrow today then tomorrow you just kind of walk into not knowing what you're going to do that's what i did when i sat right here i just show up and i had sometimes nothing to do i kind of figure out what i'm gonna do during the day or it'd be hey you want to jump out and just go look at housing yeah sure i got nothing else to do i'm not doing anything i'm just kind of here um but try to be here and have a plan of attack um you know have your you know, i have a list every single day uh, five phone calls, who I'm calling, who my first five phone calls tomorrow, who my first three notes going to, and who am I going to see face to face. That's planned out today for tomorrow. That way, I enter tomorrow with a plan of attack. 
and I'm not, you know, on my heels just reacting the entire time. I'm being proactive with it. Okay, that all makes sense there. Who has a morning routine? Okay, we're running about 30% on this, 40%. There we go. Yeah. So, um, morning routine is extremely important. Uh, real estate, the phone, when it does start ringing, you can be pulled in 15 different directions the same day. Your schedule could have nothing on it. And then, next you know, it's completely filled up. Um, so, if you were planning on going to the gym in the afternoon, that gets thrown out. You know, if you're going to show the house instead. Uh, I think going to the gym and working, you know, uh, physically is a uh, is a great thing to do. I try to get up almost every morning at 4:30. I'm usually at easy day at five o'clock. I get a workout in from five to five forty-five. I'm back home at six. I'm reading a book for 30 minutes. Um, I'm making my cup of coffee. <clears throat> I'm usually writing my three notes uh, all before seven o'clock. So I've already done more than much all of you have probably done by seven o'clock in the morning. I've already kind of won the day before you guys have gotten out of bed. All right. Does that make sense of what's important to have? You don't have to get up at 4 30. I don't, I don't love it, but I get a lot done. That's my quiet time. Um, if my wife gets up and does anything, or baby gets up, or baby kind of gets up whenever he wants to. But um, yeah, so having a plan of attack when you're going into this is vital. Like I said, if you're not prepared for the next day, then you're just not prepared. And the day kind of gets away from you, and you kind of have a wasted day. Um, you know, don't want to have two waste days back to back. You slip and you have a day where I didn't make my phone calls and I didn't do my notes, I didn't do my bye bye. Double it up the next day. Make make ten calls. Catch up on something. Write more notes. Find a way to do it. And so we don't want to start slacking off. That's how we had that drift. Okay. Yeah. One day I didn't do my notes. Uh, that was kind of cool yesterday. Let me not do it now. Do it next. Next, you know, you're here now. You get no transactions in the pipeline for the next three months. Okay. Just make sure we don't get bogged down in the day-to-day -day transaction run around without a plan. And then, like I said, then you're not doing the lead generation activities if you're you know, chasing whatever's happening, uh, whatever pops up in front of your desk or in front of your face. Um, Facebook, all that stuff, I think it's useless. Um, it's good to um, help out here and there, but it's not a primary means of generating business. The calls, notes, pop buys, Probably 10, 15 realtors. Suzanne sold it, sold her house. You know, that's all they see. You're one of 10 on Facebook. You know, how many of them are calling their friends? You're a, your friend or you're just a Facebook friend? Okay. I don't spend nearly any time on social media. Um, it's one, I think it's a giant time sucker. You know, you jump on Facebook, next you know, you look up at your phone, you've been on there for an hour, you've done nothing. Now your day is derailed. You just, your, your hour, you're supposed to write notes is now passed. And now you have an appointment to go to. Now your notes get pushed it tomorrow. See how that can balloon and change very quickly. So try to stay off of that. I think it's, it's great to have the Facebook marketing page, but it's good when you just do that. Okay. And you're not just on there to be on there, especially during the middle of the day. You know, pretend like, you know, I ask myself sometimes when I'm in the office, you know, would I have paid myself for the work I did today? If I had a boss looking over me, what I did, did I earn a paycheck today? Or did I, you know, did I live off the company dollar and not do anything? Okay. So treat each day like you're getting paid. You're getting paid to work. You know, we are getting paid to work. You're paying yourself. It's just in six months for what you're doing right now. Does that make sense, everybody? Yeah, the best thing to pay for is to figure out if there's something going on. Yes. Yep. And that part, I check it once a day. Yeah. And that's, yeah. And maybe, maybe scheduled that time. Yeah. You know, hey, here's, here's my Facebook time. I think on your phones, now you can, you know, block out. Facebook or certain apps or certain times, give yourself a set amount of time to say, let me check in on this. And what I do is I go, I have my little notepad with me. And I'm like, hey, uh, I just know that um, I climb on Katie Towns and had a baby. And written note, $25 gift card to Amazon to buy whatever baby stuff that pops up. And if I ate it, somebody lost their parent. Yes, condolence cards. Yeah. I and mean, it's something, you know, reach out. It's, this is the part where like, you have to care about people. You know, you show you care through, you know, things that aren't just calls, notes, pop eyes, but it's the, the note to them, with, you know, there's a note, it's a handwritten note, you take the time out to say, hey, I'm very sorry you lost your father, you know, that means so much more to them than, you know, your Facebook post about selling a house or, you know, cute pictures of dogs or anything else like that, you know, they want to know, you know who cares about them. If you care about them, they know that, they, that you know, Craig's got my best interest in mind, you know, he, he reached out. When my dog passed away and sent me, you know, a nice note, and you know, that meant a whole lot to me. And something he remembers. 
All right, now I'm gonna call Craig because I know Craig's a good guy. I want him, I want a good guy representing me to sell my house. Okay, all that stuff works. You gotta be genuine with a lot of it. <clears throat> um, small events. Um, I talked a little bit about I'm getting ready to do like a Capital One happy hour. Um, so try to connect people and try to do something nice, little, simple. You don't have to spend a ton of money on this sort of stuff either. Um, you know, also get business partner to help sponsor stuff with you. Um, you know, I'm going to ask James because his uh, fiance works at Capital One. James went to town for a I haven't asked him yet, but James is probably going to help me sponsor that little Capital One um, deal and get the town first credit card out and uh, swap a few drinks on that. But um, yeah, have a business partner, have people, you know, people are more than willing to help out and they want to get in front of your clients as well. Uh, we do a giant squirrels game. Um, so I think uh, we didn't do it last year because of the C word um, before that, but uh, we're going to bring it back this year and years previous, we've had almost 350 people come to that. So as a, some of you do business with, uh, I know we have Rock Creek Innovations. They do a bunch of uh, patio stuff for a bunch of, uh, bunch of our clients. Um, so they were the ones who sponsored the first 250 beers. You know, for him, he was able to spend, you know, what it was, 750 bucks or something, three bucks a beer, four bucks a beer, thousand dollars to get in front of 350 homeowners and hand out, you know, drink beer out of, you know, his koozie. You know, so you can do something like that for us. It's very minimal cost to have 350 people out to a baseball game and all that's paid for by lenders, contractors, other people who are more than willing to get in front of our database. Okay, so as being homeowners, you can also help out and partner out with those HVAC guys, those plumbers. You know, you can keep them busy. Um, that's also a good person to have when your toilet starts leaking. Hey. Johnny, I've sent you 20, 20 toilets to fix in the last two years. I need, you, I need some help. I need you up here ASAP. Um, so it's good to know those four people too um, and help them out and help them build their business. We want to bring everybody with us up. You know, imagine you're you know, at the top of the hill. You want to be pulling people up the entire way you go. Um, people did that with me when I first started. Now I'm trying to do that with you guys here now and, and, and get back and show you guys a little bit how it's done and some tips and tricks. And um, people are willing to do that. Listen, business partners are great too. They're great referral sources. Um, they can help out there in front of homeowners too. If they're building a patio for somebody or they're doing something, hey, we want to get this patio redone before we put the house on the market. Who's your agent? I don't have one. I want to introduce you to Kevin. Now you have a referral from someone like that. Um, so those are just tiny little little things. We try to build um, that database. I said similar to I had a guy reach out that I need a, I need a black aluminum fence. All right. I reach out to the team and say, hey, who's our fence guy? And we got three fence people and I can say, hey, Here's our fence guy for source. Now that fence guys, hey, I really appreciate that referral. Let's go sit down and grab a coffee, see if we can see if any more business or help to each other. Okay, find good connections, people you trust as well. I said, if you're going to refer somebody out, you want to make sure they're good. They're not going to you know, no show on your clients. You want to make sure they're respectable. Uh, they're going to be you know, performing well because they're kind of representing you when you refer them out to somebody. Uh, I've had people I've had to kind of fire from my contractor list or this or that because hey, they stopped showing up or they weren't responsive or it took them three months to get a quote on something. People, and that kind of reflects poorly on you, but it let contractors and know how you work and what you expect. Share expectations, share what, you know, what you're expecting out of them, what you want out of them and what they expect back from you. Um, so just be clear on that. Um, but having business partners is a, uh, is a giant pro. Um, with small events, uh, I think Ben's going to teach a class on uh, party planning later on in one of these Wednesday sessions. Um, we have a small event. I get to, uh, I'll bring back to the Capital One. I get to call my Capital One people and say, hey, I'm inviting you to a little happy hour. All right. Some people are say, hey, I can't make it. I know one of the girls um, is pregnant. She's probably not going to come drink. Um, so I'll probably write her a note. Hey, sorry, you can't attend. We'll definitely catch you the next one. And maybe drop it or, well, on that same day, give her a bottle of sparkling cider drop by our house right around the corner. Um, so they're not missing out long. You want to write them a note, can't wait to see you. Or, hey, sorry, you can't make it. Um, then you can see those people face to face, pop up again with the note after that. Hey, it was great having you out. Um, we have to have some good conversations. And while you're there, you can talk to them. You know, they're going to ask you how business is. Um, that just that eventually just comes up. You have to have those kind of talking points. You're ready to go. You know, interest rates, why the market's doing what it's doing. Uh, just did a house that popped up in your neighborhood last week. Um, those sort of things. So I said, just being knowledgeable and knowing what you're talking about, having information at hand, ready to go, being the source of the source. I'll say that again, again, and again. <clears throat> um, face to face is is just huge. Um, it's one of my favorite parts of 
the business, I'd much rather go do pot buys than you know, write notes at times. Uh, when I first started out, uh, there's a bunch of, I saw a bunch of pictures um, from you know, seven, eight years ago where I was dressed as a fat elf um, for Christmas time, dropping off bags of chocolate covered nuts. Um, and I had a little tagline that said, here, try my nuts. Uh, it didn't work out so great, but it was fun. It was memorable. Um, and I had a good time with it. And people, you know, they, they had a good time. And I walked into their office and they have 50 people there. And I'm dressed up like a, an elf and I was rather rotund um, back then. So it was even kind of funnier. But um, yes, yeah, so I was able to go there, see them. Everyone's like, who the hell is that guy? Um, that's my realtor. Yeah, it's got to go, that seems like a ton of fun. And yeah, you each have a good relationship with that person. They have fun and they can kind of talk to you. Um, I still do this. I have a pilgrim suit. Um, actually, I pulled over by this officer. Did you really? No. no. I stopped him back by my house because I had to uh, had to pee. I was going too fast. I was going 47 to 35, and then I got out of my car, and there's this officer uh, behind me um, in my driveway, and I was dressed like a pilgrim and just froze right there. So, it was laugh? it was pretty funny. And small story about that. And this is how things work. Um, mm -hmm. The police officer, uh, she, her parents lived next door to my in-laws. Um, so that became a funny topic of conversation at Thanksgiving when I said I got pulled over. Um, it was a younger uh, blonde police officer and my uh, <clears throat> mother-in-law and father-in-law like uh, Johnny and Susie next door have a daughter who's officer who's about 30 and, and blonde. Um, pulled up, turned out to be her. It was kind of a funny thing at Thanksgiving. I had to wave to each other. I wasn't in my pilgrim suit then, but um, still kind of funny little thing small world how things work out and you'll be surprised how small the world is um people know people people know each other people run in different circles um that's the cool thing about when your business grows um you'll have you know i know uh one of the capital one people uh the girl who's pregnant refers to somebody who's moving down from virginia um at capital one uh, we sold her house they've since uh, sent us two other people who work, also work at capital one um because we let them know they work by referral, you know, they move to Richmond, they don't know anybody. Um, all they know is myself and Mara, um, because we're the realtors and we're trying to help, you know, connect them with other people. Um, and they've connected us with other people. Those people who they connected with us with end up knowing some of the other people that we know from something else. So it's ended up being a giant circle uh, of that. And then when you have those big squirrel schemes and big events, and everyone knows each other, and you're not really, you know, you're kind of the reason everyone's there. But it's like, hey, how do you know? Kevin and Ben and Mara. Well, they helped me sell their house. They helped me sell the house too. I know that you guys knew each other. And that becomes a little bit more fun. Um, and you do go do a small little client lunch. You, know, you go out there and say, hey, let's all get together for lunch, you know, in, in three weeks. Put it on the books. And now you have people that you didn't know knew each other before together sitting at a table. Who else do you guys know? You know, just an expanding spider web circle of this person referred me to, you know, Sally. Sally referred me to Bob and uh, Bob Dylan, Bob Dylan, Bob and Dylan. Um, and then Bob and Dylan know Johnny and Susie from other places. And actually, it's a big party um, right there. So, so everyone ends up knowing each other and a lot of these things uh, and making those connections and having events, getting people out and getting face to face is how you find out people know each other. Right? All that makes sense. Right? Was the cop laughing at you that she gave footage of? <sighs> Not really. She was just kind of like, uh, hello, Mr. Pilgrim. You know, you're speeding. What are you doing in a car? You know, <laughs> <laughs> I tried giving her pod best bribe, so uh, what that one? But um, um, kind of one of the last couple of things here, we'll kind of get this wrapping up. I'm not sure how we're doing on time, so I just get to come out here and ramble. Uh, pretty good. Um, fill in the cracks of your day. Uh, so when you have the extra hour or two, what are you going to do instead of sitting around and scrolling on Facebook? Um, you know, I like to listen to podcasts. Uh, when I'm driving in the car, I'm listening to the Brian Buffini show. I think he just changed it to uh, It's a Good Life is the new name of it. Um, I get to pick up some great things from that. Um, some personal growth stuff always helps. Reading, um, I've learned a lot from reading stuff. Perspectives, uh, who, who watches Shark Tank? You yeah, guys, Barb. You know what Barb's background is? Real, real estate. Okay, she's got a book, I think it's called Shark Tales. Um, it's very interesting, you know, quick little thing to read. It's fairly um, 
easy book, uh, kind of her little life story. But, you know, she grew up in New York, wasn't you know, extremely well off or wealthy or anything like that. But you get to hear about her, her origin stories and what she did and how she was different than anybody else and how she attacks, you know, the market, how she thinks a little bit different. Everyone else was doing open houses on Saturdays and Sundays. She was doing them on Fridays, you know, just like Suzanne does. Um, so find something a little bit different to do and how can you do something similar, you know, for your business. Um, but reading books about people who, uh, you know, and, and people who invested in real estate, people who started in real estate, have their backgrounds um, in real estate. Read some of that stuff, listen to some of that stuff, and also just personal growth as a whole. Um, working on mind, body, spirit, everything goes a long way. Um, it takes a lot uh, to really do this every single day. He said it's mundane, calls, notes, pop buys. We go to the same meeting twice a week. You know, our team meet Mondays and Wednesdays. Those meetings can you know, get mundane at times, but you got to know you got to buckle down, do it, show up and do the work, or else you're not going to have anything to talk about at those meetings in two or three months. Okay. Um, other things that fill in the cracks um, write five notes. Uh, I got a spare hour, write five notes. You can do it very simple and easily. Um, like I said, when I'm at home or I'm driving, I'm doing laundry, yard work, I have a podcast. You know, if you're walking around doing nothing, headphones in, I can still answer phone calls while I'm raking leaves or doing whatever. Um, so it's kind of filling in those cracks, getting ideas, um, the things I implement for my business based on what I'm listening to, what I'm reading, what I'm hearing. Um, so those are all um, good things to do. If you go to the gym, um, you, know, you need to go to the gym. You know, we were there. If you're there on a Tuesday afternoon at two o'clock and you get to chit chat with somebody, that's great. Um, you know, bring up real estate. Uh, there, there's always a way so you can just write up conversations, see who people know. Um, Mike Schnall, there's nobody better at it. I think uh, he's gotten pulled over by his office before and turned into uh, selling them houses. Um, so uh, yeah, he, he's never afraid to ask. You cannot be afraid to ask. If you do not ask for business, you'll never get it. That may be the best line of the day that I'll have here. If you don't ask for business, you're never going to get it. Um, you may be asking people, ask, it doesn't. Okay. Yeah, they don't know you're looking for a uh, someone to sell their sell a house in Milestone neighborhood, they're not going to look for a Milestone house uh, for you if somebody's trying to sell. They don't know you're trying to find a renter to convert them into buyers. They know 10 renters, they're not going to send you any renters. They don't know that's what you're looking for. But let them know what you're looking for. The more specific you are with your asks, the better off, the better results you get. So, hey, I'm looking for buyers and sellers in 2022. Okay, okay great. Then they go on about their day. If you have a specific question, hey, I'm trying to find someone who's living the fan right now, maybe a young professional who, you know, has been renting for a couple of years and, you know, who should, who do you think should be buying a house this year? Uh, who thinks it's about time they, you know, get out of, you know, downtown or who needs to downsize? Whose kids are all out of the house now that, um, you know, they're living in a 4,000 square foot house and it's just the two of them. Do you think they need to move or downsize or maybe buy a condo and they want to go to Florida or something else? You know, those are people I, want my, I like to talk to. So be specific with your ask and you'll have greater returns. Okay. You ever see how that works? If you just throw a shotgun out, you know, you know, man, I hit if you hit anything, it's not really on the stick. You, know, you went in with that you know, uh, targeted uh, gunshot right there, hit him, knock him dead. Um, hot sheets. Who knows about hot sheets? Aiden does, Sand does, Justin does a little bit, talk about those today. Um, that gives you these snapshots. It's on your homepage of MLS. I think it's called Market Watch. Um, bunch of, it's got all the columns that are different colors. That lets you know every house that has moved to the market over the last 24 hours, one day, three days, and seven days. Um, so you can kind of see what's going on, uh, what's what happened, what's just popped up. Okay, those are just good things to look at. You're killing time. Jump on MLS, play around. What neighborhood are you interested in? What, what where did the million dollar houses sell in Richmond? You know, do a search for that. You know, what houses sell that are, you know, what house is 7,000 square feet? These are just good things to talk about. Um, yeah, I saw this house, it was listed at $4.2 you know, million. And that's just something good to bring up and talk to people or it comes up in conversation. Um, people ask you, hey, you see this house that, um, uh, there's a house in my neighborhood that popped up. What do you know about it? And you're like, I have no idea. I have no neighborhood to live in. But if you're on that, you know, if you're on MLS and see stuff and see what's going on in the market, you can say, oh, I actually saw that one already. It's listed at, you know, 429. Um, it's got five bedrooms, it's got a basement, the basement's pretty dated, it's got an old bar in it, and uh, yeah, probably needs to be all redone. I know about it because I'm in touch and in tune with what's going on in the market. Okay, so just make sure you're inputting as much stuff as possible. Like I said, if we don't have a boss, you're your own boss, would you pay yourself what you did today? All right, I think that'll, that'll be uh, 
just about wrap it up here, guys. Who has any uh, questions on this stuff? Who picked up something good today? What we pick up? Tim, what you pick up? Um, just about, I mean, the whole meeting, being more proactive. Mm -hmm. I know it's, it's hard when I work like nine, 10 hours a day mm -hmm. at my other job, so. Yeah, that becomes um, something where it's filling the cracks. Are you able to have headphones in at work? Maybe. No. Maybe, yeah. yeah it's yeah. kind of a hazard. Heavy, heavy, heavy machinery, heavy equipment. So, but I think um, putting like business cards in everybody's car, or mm -hmm. I have them set out because I mean, my boss is supportive. I have them, I have them set out for the customers can see them and I put them in everybody's car when I yeah. go around. And, see, that's great. And, and you may not see any return for that. And so that could be a business card in there, but it's doing something. Okay, you never know when that you know, business card is going to be found in six months and someone may give you a call. But that's just one thing we can do. And I said, now it's about layering it. All right, we're doing a business card there. Now we're doing a, maybe a flyer out in the, in the shop, something like that. And then you know, teaching to follow people or just have conversations to start people who work in uh, work with you. I know you had a couple of people um, already that are you know, kind of in the housing market. Now it's working with them. How am I going to you know, make sure that I'm the person they refer out to? Um, so that's good. Who else picked up something good? Great, what you got? Uh, I had a goal for this year to do uh, door knocking. Yes. Yeah, it's old school. It's old school still works. Yeah. And, and guess uh, what? People don't do it right now, so it's new school again. But so with that being said, I was kind of thinking like, you know, just go over and introduce myself. I think picking up on what you said as far as getting a dynamic of what's been going on, those yeah. numbers, getting prices, things like that, even statistics, that yeah. would be very helpful. A lot yep. just saying, yeah, I'm ready to go. So. What's your plan for door knocking? Uh, so I live in Southside and okay. right in the Forest Hill area, mm -hmm. and I really just want to hone down a new tech neighborhood over there. And okay. Walk as much as I can. You doing a bunch of open houses? I have this past year. And okay. This year as well. Yeah, a great thing to do is if you have an open house on Saturday, go door knock on Thursday or Friday. You put your signs out, go knock on those doors, say, hey, here's a flyer. Um, here's the house that's uh, going to be listed, you know, just, just came on the market, it's listed here. And some people are going to slam the door in your face, but people won't answer. Other people are like, what the hell are you doing on my doorstep? Get off. Um, people talk to you through the ring doorbell. Um, so get off my porch. But you're going to find that person that you know, has genu genuine interest or they have someone who they, their best friend is trying to move into the neighborhood. Um, and they want to know what the house is, what's worth. And they're going to call their friend. Hey, this guy, um, call this guy Craig. He's came by my house. His house is going to be open this weekend. You know, call him. You know, so that's a very good, simple, easy thing to do if you're doing a lot of open houses. Let people know around you. Hey, here's you know a snapshot of the neighborhood. Here's where it's in the house. Um, you know, and just provide information to people. But I think door knocking is something that people have gotten away from. It's a very old school way of doing it. I did it when I first started out. Same thing, open houses. Yeah, you know, I'd go around those neighborhoods and canvas everything and see what I could pick up and see if I can generate some business to make sure I have people make sure my Saturday or Sunday is worthwhile. Nothing more frustrating than an open house and no one comes by. Awful. I just sat there and wasted you know. However many hours, I threw up balloons, I set out signs on Friday, I sat there on Saturday for two or three hours, I got the really have baked cookies. Um, I don't always bake cookies, and I'm fine, don't have to have them, but they are a nice little treat. Um, yeah, so I mean, just doing those things and make sure people try to show up. You know, that's why it's important to put the balloons out, get more people through and have those conversations. And like I said, that's the, um, that's the testing ground for us is the open houses. Right? As a female, I'm very, I'm wary of doing it as a male. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it shouldn't be that way. Yeah, but that is. Yeah. And also, it is neighborhood dependent, too. And I also check up an alpha face on neighborhoods. Yeah. And that's, and you it's talk. talk about that. You mm -hmm. can definitely. Yeah, definitely do it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah. It's hard. I, I think that's, and it's, you know, hey, do you want to target? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I know that um, uh, Ben, for one of the things that he did, this was a couple of years ago, he wanted to increase his average price point. So, um, he's from Hondos little steakhouse right over here. They have an incredible lunch deal where it's regular price stuff and the sandwiches are, you know, 10, 12 bucks, um, you know, $15, somewhere in there. And it's a higher place, a higher end place where they have the nice cloth napkins and the server that walks out and peppers your stuff. So what he did is he had a bunch of, he made one lunch home in a week with people who he kind of targeted were in, you know, more well off. They were, um, you know, financial advisors or um, people who are their own businesses. And he took them out to lunch at Honda's. That next year, his average price point increased because he was targeting who he was asking for referrals. So if you're targeting people who are in higher end um, you know, walks of life, they hang out with people who are in higher end walks of life. All right, so who do they know? Who's their network? Who's their circle? 
that's how he was able to increase his price point just by that. Okay, so just something simple, easy, but having a plan going into it always helps. Who else got something good? Brian? Um, just developing a, a routine. Um, I had one and lost it and now get drift, into it. right? Yeah. Drift, get back into it. And it's also realizing when you're drifting. <clears throat> That may be the most important part of drifting or just routines in, in general. When you realize that, hey, I'm a little bit off schedule, I need to get back on or else I'm going to end up way the hell over here, right? Good. That's the hardest part for somebody who works because I just mm -hmm. think you're the only other person around that has another. I think so. Yeah, I work, well, I do this part-time. I work full-time or beyond full-time at a dealership, so that's I'm trying tough. to switch up. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's, that's tough. But I realize it's not going to happen like I mean, my goal is to maybe quit there like next year. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and talk what to you... this guy. He, he's a brave one around here. No. Just he's just right there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes good. Well, I, I mean, you my house. So I, I know. Too. Well, he, yeah. Take that same work harder than, than a mortgage payment needed to be. That's right. <laughs> there, there you go. So, I mean, it's good to have that drive, a little bit of a uh, push behind yeah, it. Also, too, guys, <laughs> setting goals and having goals um, is just as important as all this stuff. If you don't have goals, you don't have anything you're aiming for, you're going to hit nothing. Okay, have some goals, set some stuff that you're trying to accomplish. Let people know, share with your COI, hey, I'm trying to help out 25 families this year in, in Hanover. Let people know that. Okay, um, you know, you never want to tell people, hey, I'm trying to make 100 grand this year. You know, it's, it's never that. It's, you know, we're, we're helping people. Money is a... Um, uh, not, not a side effect, it? but uh, yeah, it's, yeah, it comes. You know, if you do your job right, you treat people right, you get paid, you get compensated. Um, and then there's a lot of people around here who make a lot of money are very good people. I think there's something to be said about that too. You got a question up front? Yep. Ma'am, do you have a yeah. question? Different one. Uh, uh, yeah. I did have a question. Yeah. So this is a little kind of you were touching on the MLS. <laughs> Is there train like is there somewhere I can go to like learn more about it? <laughs> John, John, <laughs> yeah. okay. uh, John will tell you a whole heck of a lot. The advice I can give you too is jump on there and play around. Yes. Play around. Yeah. So I mean, you know, it's like not sending anything and get your sense up to somebody, you send them houses or something. And you can um, practice by sending yourself. I yeah. I yeah. I, we just, the team so they just did the uh the one home it was a nice transition that I'm not, they may have sent stuff out about it transitioning to the the new system but I, I didn't read any of the mls updates ever um <laughs> so yeah i have no idea they're changing neighbor systems and uh, i get logged on one day I was like oh what is this so we all set each other up on searches for each other that way we could play around it from a client point of view so if that's something you can do save a search set up for yourself maybe do one like i said i have the one set for around my house and neighbors around it to try to set yourself up on a search for that um there are some trainings, and I can give you a brief crash course overview here after this. Thank you. And just looking over people, people's shoulders, like I would go in and just stand behind me. Yeah. Yeah. So the first open house I did by myself had a lot of traffic. Mm -hmm. I had chatted a couple before that that was in a rural area that had like two or three. Mm -hmm. So the first one I did had a lot of yeah. traffic. And so like while three people were living at the house, this um, – couple and their whole family came in and they wanted to like write a contract right mm -hmm. then like i just said i just yeah. smiled and yeah. like yeah we can help you with that and i was text, oh, that i was texting Very real. i was yeah. texting tommy like i'm yeah. smiling and i have no idea what the girl is doing yeah. um and that's, and anyway that's it was like he was right like well it's all on mls i was like like i had had my license i think for three days or mm -hmm. something so yeah. So I don't think you can get on them all. Yeah, and some of it too is talking, you know, with your lead agent and stuff and, and kind of getting that, you know, a little more transfer time to get yeah. down with you and kind of go through it in, in depth or someone on the team can show okay. you how it's done. Um, it's, we have a brand new agent on the team, so he's doing his first type of house this weekend. He's like, you know, what questions do I have? And I'm just kind of like, hey, just, just go do it. And then yeah. if, if anything pops up, call me. Okay. Um, and we'll figure that out. Yeah, um, I didn't know if there was a class. There, the there is a, a open house class. There's an MLS class. Just be on the lookout for that stuff. John okay. Nix also comes by the offices. Um, okay. and he, he pops in out of, in and out of each office uh, like once. It's, not, it's more than once a month. It's like every other week he'll be sitting in the conference room um, there for help if he will kind of like office hours. Okay. Um, he's a good person to down with one-on-one. -on -one. Okay. You may sit down for three or four hours. Yeah. 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 
um, yeah, uh, YouTube, I think Hometown's got the YouTube page. Um, I'm not sure if this will be uploaded onto this or not. Um, but uh, yeah, I think it's important to show up to, to, to this stuff too. And if you can do it in person, it's just easier. Um, you know, I think it's good clicking through it. Um, talk to Tommy next time he's running a CMA for a listing appointment. Say, can I sit in with you on it and see how he kind of uses and utilizes MLS. Okay. Um, but yeah, jump on it, play around. Now I was playing around on earlier today. We found a whole new um, set of uh, like the layers that are on there. You can find yeah, the zip codes. I didn't click on that stuff. I just do the you know, maps. I know the areas and all that. So I do my stuff. But then this, you know, you can do the um, have the zip, zip codes will be overlaid on the on the maps. You can see where they are. What zip codes? What? Um, some people are like, I don't want to be in two three one one one. I want to be in two three one one six. You know, I want to be in Hanover. You can take it. You can take out. That's like a school district thing. That's just say, hey, I just want to be in the zip code, which is you know some people have different reasons for you know wanting to be in different spots. But you can cut that sort of stuff out. Um, you can learn a lot. Of, and a lot of it's just playing around. You can add a bunch of fields um, to it. Um, you can yeah. You, you can play on MLS around for hours. And I said the hot sheets is very good. That's the on that home page. It's the multicolored column horizontal column bars. That shows you everything. The last couple of days, it's hit the market. Just start clicking through those houses. Um, click through, see what's around there. Just have a search for active houses. Look at pending houses, look at closed houses, and you can type in school district. You know, the school district by county. Do many different things on there, but it really get on there to plan around. Okay. There is a decent instruction manual in a way. You first log in. You know, you hit matrix at the top left, and then you go to the number hub and all those boxes. Like one of the boxes down below, when I first started, I know I hit um, hit that, and it and it took it into where there's like a search window, and you can just type in kind of like a frequently asked question. Thing where you just type in what you're looking for help on, and it gives you a tutorial, the step by step, mm -hmm. and how to do it. But like everybody said, make an appointment with John. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> So, and all, yeah, and yeah, if you're in the office, you guys have team meetings, just ask them to stick around. We just, Justin and I just did it. Um, Mar, we were just playing around on there for a couple of different things. Um, just ask them on the team to make them give, give you a real quick crash course. Okay. So, all right. All right, guys, with the MSA questions on anything? Um, with the one home thing, mm -hmm. do you have to actually have an account or is it all right if we just look at so it? So, as an agent, way? yeah, when it sends it out, it sends it out like, hey, this is from Tim to the client. Yeah, because I clicked on it. And it said I'm viewing it how the client views it, mm -hmm. but I don't know if we actually need an account or if we can just view it like that. No, you just view it like that. If as an agent, you can do whatever you want to. And even if the, it's like a, you know, one thing I don't like about the one home is it's like you can like schedule your own showing or just request the times. I want all my clients to run through me on that because I'm the one has to show them the house. Yeah. Um, so I don't know why they did that. I don't like the fact that they did that. User user interface. Interface. Yeah. Well, I figured it out this yeah. afternoon. If you create the account on there, okay, if you use your own, like your um, hometown email to go create an account, it won't let you. So what I did was I used my Hotmail account and I went in to create the account that you can create. And all it does is it allows your clients to open up their own search on one home. Which I don't and like either. So you can have your own, I know, it's, it's kind of like if they're going to realtor.com or Zillow.com, uh, they're able to do that kind of search through one home. It asks them some general questions to start out and then it allow, allows you to not only see what your agent is sending you, but to yeah. start your own search mm -hmm. if you want to. I just tell them to tell me and I'll update. Exactly. Now, exactly. going yeah. into where you remember when we said we saw that link where it says mm -hmm. schedule the showing yeah. or schedule a tour. Mm -hmm. If they click on that and they do it, all it does is it sends you, the agent, a note. Okay. It's kind of like if they go on there and they do the thumbs up or the thumbs down or they click send a note to my agent. It just adds a note to their mm -hmm. file. They don't actually get to do yeah. the schedule. Yeah. It sends you a generic note saying that John Doe is available between nine and twelve on Thursday, January sixth. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Same yeah. thing. Yeah. Yeah. Just yeah. You know, part of that's, we have a buyer class I'm teaching in here in a couple of weeks too, which will go into depth on you know how we you know, work with buyers and how we sit them down and how we set up MLS and get it very detailed. That way they're not searching on Zillow, Trulia, Realtor.com, any of that stuff. 
we want them to be looking at what we send them because what we send is real live information that you know, has their criteria specified all the way down to you know what you know the garage, no garage, location, zip code, school district, and that sort of stuff. We want to get that as detailed as possible. That way, they don't have to search on all these other websites. They yeah. still do it. And they still do it, and they're always going to. But uh, I usually tell people they get like one or two times to send me a Zillow link before I you know, cut them off from Zillow links. Um, just because <laughs> I'll go through and point out, guys, this house didn't pop up because it's hardboard siding. And we talked about high hardboard siding in our appointment. Hardboard siding is like wet cardboard when it, uh, it starts deteriorating. It's expensive. You got to replace it all the time. You got to paint it every three to five years. And we don't want that maintenance involved. And then they're kind of like, oh, okay. That's, that's why I didn't show up. You told me to delete Zillow off my phone. Yes, that's it. That's it. It works, right? Get out. <laughs> yeah, it did. <laughs> so, um, all right, guys, we'll wrap that up here. Thank you all for coming out. Uh, you, uh, we're going to try to be doing these trainings every uh, Wednesday, I think, 2 o'clock. Um, next couple months, it's myself, uh, Ben Rogers, Larry Sanders, and Dean Cheatham teaching a bunch of them. Um, these will all be very good ones. There's a number of trainings, too. Check that calendar out. Uh, I think Stephanie will send it out yesterday, the day before the January uh, events. So just take a look at that and just try to attend as much as you can. You're going to soak up as much as you can. So if you have nothing else going on, you're new, um, attend everything you possibly can. Like say you're, you're working, you know, you don't have a boss telling you what to do, where to be. But if it's between nine and five, for the most part, you don't have anything else going on, you don't have appointments scheduled, then get your butts to training. Okay. Talk to other agents. Yeah. yeah. You just got to go. Got to go. Got to do it. So, all right, everybody, uh, everyone on here. See you later. Thank you, Kevin. Thanks, Kevin.